Hi guys, hi guys. Um, I hope you guys are doing good, you guys are doing great, and that you're enjoying the channel once more. Um, keep liking, subscribing, sharing, and commenting. So thank you so much for being a part of this. Um, yeah. So guys, uh, I've been struggling a bit with uh, finishing this and uh, this um, um, series on uh, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy because of space um, in my the, equip the equipment that I use. So I've got like my space. So I'm forced to break this. Uh, this uh, I so I was forced to break our teaching on uh, hypertensive disorders in pregnancy into sections. Uh, not that it should really be in sections, but because of the space. So let's finish it up. So we have spoken about um, the management yesterday. Now there's just small, small things that I just want to put them into into perspective. There's uh, this thing that you're gonna keep hearing in the hospital, PET. Uh, PET. A diagnosis of PET. I have a slight problem with it. Um, and you will see it in the hospital because for me it does grade the, the, the severity of the PIH to some extent but not fully so personally I just prefer calling eclampsia eclampsia calling preeclampsia with severe features calling it that or just preeclampsia or gestational hypertension or chronic I just like it that way it makes things simple for me so you're gonna hear this thing of PT bloods. So the most important bloods um, in these patients are they call them PET bloods. Um, so it's a HB, it's a platelets, it's a transaminases, which is AST or ALT. Doesn't have to be the two of them, but in most most people they just um always request for the two of them but you can choose one of the two the transaminases uh, because they tell you i'll just explain now the other one is ldh three four five the other one is creatinine so whenever you are asked to do pt bloods these are the bloods that they want because these bloods, first of all, these are the bloods that you will use to diagnose your HELP syndrome. And we know that HELP syndrome is a complication of PIH. Um, so it will help you. So remember, with um, PIH, what is happening there, you are having um, systemic vasoconstriction. Systemic vasoconstriction. And um, when you've got systemic vasoconstriction, uh, even arteries that supply major organs, they become vasoconstricted. And in that way, they become, they become hypoperfused and, and then they die. They become necrotic, they become ischemic, and then they become necrotic, and then they die. So the quickest way of seeing if your kidney is 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 uh, is being affected by this um, by this uh, high blood pressures because of the vasoconstriction um, is creatinine. So this is for kidney. As much as we know that you can also do protein here, protein urea, because you are not supposed to be leaking protein in your urine. So once you leak protein in your urine, it means that you have a heavy blood pressure that is damaging your kidneys. So, so those are the two things, um, and we have said there are three ways of checking protein. You can do a deep stick, you can do a 24-hour urine correction, and uh, have the lab measure protein for you, which should not be above 300 milligrams. And also doing a, the urine protein, uh, the protein creatine ratio. So those are the things. With LDH, there are some people who don't do LDH, there are some people who do it, but this is just a measure of hemolysis. So, so it's a plus or minus. Some people they do it, some they don't do it. Um, and then, like I said, you do one of the tools. This is like your, 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 your liver. So, this tells you about how badly, whether your 
whether it tells you if your your, your liver is affected by the PIH or if it's affected how bad is the, is the how is the severity how severe is the problem and also with platelets with uh, with this uh, PIH you normally get um wastage of your platelets there's like some so, some sort of a high consumption of platelets so your platelets they also drop in Lenduk uh, with this condition and um the hemolysis you get a drop in HP because of the hemolysis your red cells are hemolyzing and then you get your LDH being high and all of that so when someone says do PET bloods just remember you do this blood and when you do PET bloods they will help you to grade your patient because for it like we said a patient who's got a high blood pressure they don't have any of this there's no protein you can safely say this is gestational hypertension or it's a pure chronic hypertension but the minute we've got changes here then now we are talking about preeclampsia probably depending on the other features preeclampsia with severe features or whatever the case might be or already maybe the patient is eclamptic so it's very important to do this blood um so the brain is also damaged by this high blood pressure but there is no test that you can do for the brain the only thing that you can you depend here on physical on um, symptoms uh, like your headache dizziness seizures that's when you can tell that okay even the brain now is also involved some patients can even come in with a stroke i think that's the saddest thing with high and or oh, that's one of because the, the saddest is losing the baby or losing the mother but one of the saddest thing is to have someone who get a stroke from a pih it's so sad i've seen it um a couple of times it's so bad it's so sad so that's it with um, a pih so there has been research that has been done in terms of preventing PIH if a, if a patient has got risk factors. Let's say you've got a previous PIH. Um, there are studies that say that giving these women from 16 weeks, giving them aspirin and giving them calcium chloride sort of helps. Um, I'm not sure if it's something that is really practice, uh, but in any case, it's at a specialist level. Remember, we are not specialists. Uh, we are just general practitioners. So there is that as well. I think if you've got a patient that you are worried about that they've got a history and all of that, you might want to call your consultant and ask them uh, what's their take. Should you start them or what should should be done? So guys, I think that's it with uh, with hypertensive disorders in pregnancy. Thank you so much and um, keep watching. Um, now we're going to move on to the next session. Uh, section or the next part you will find out in uh, in few minutes what will that be thank you thank you thank you and thank you